Hi, this is Jamie Wilbur, and I am the MSU Potato and Sugar Beet Pathologist. Today, one of the graduate students in my program will be helping to give an update on two of our ongoing Cercospora leaf spot research projects. So I'm going to talk with graduate student Alex Hernandez about our inoculum reduction study in sugar beets. Alex, can you provide us a general purpose of this study? We are actually trying to find new ways to reduce Cercospora leaf spot by preventing the pathogen from overwintering on leaf debris. And what treatments are we testing this year? So the treatments, we first have a plow or tillage treatment um, that's occurring after harvest. Um, we also have a desiccant treatment where uh, we apply desiccant to sugar beets one week before harvest. Um, then we also have a heat treatment. Um, this occurred just before topping at harvest. And then lastly, we have a non-treated control um, just for a comparison. This was for last year to see um, how they overwintered for this season. Can you describe a little bit more about the burner treatment? How does that actually work? Um, high heat or high temperatures could possibly reduce or prevent overwintering and the survival of Sargospora baticola. Um, the fungus is sensitive to temperatures over 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So our propane-fueled uh, burner creates an unfavorable environment um, by exceeding this range for a brief period of time. Alex, we're going to go to a video that you took of the burner operating in the field at the end of last year. Can you describe to us what we're seeing in this video? So we start by powering up the burner, um, and then we lower the flame over the beads, and then we heat the beads to about 1,200 to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. So how are we going to determine whether these treatments are effective at reducing Cercospora leaf spot? First of all, over the winter, I analyzed symptomatic leaves collected at harvest and at three time points after harvest to assess whether the fungi survives in the affected treatments. This year, for six weeks from about June to July, I placed boxes of about four beads of a highly susceptible variety within enclosures in each plot to act as a living spore trap. Uh, I also collected disease ratings every other week um, to assess the differences between the treatments. Um, we also collected soil samples from each treatment area to measure the differences in the amount of pathogen in the soil. We're going to go to some pictures of your field trials. Um, could you describe to us what we're seeing? Each of our four treatments has four replicates. All are planted with four rows of sugar beets and they have 30 inch spacing. This trial is conducted within 10 foot by 60 foot plots with a 10 foot untreated buffer zone plus 10 foot wheat alleyways um, around the trial to reduce movement of the pathogen between these plots. Within each plot surrounding the living spore traps, is a five foot by 10 foot enclosure. This is made from plastic sheeting and galvanized steel poles. This is also used to further reduce the movement of Cercospora spores from adjacent treatments. Are you seeing any promising results so far? We're actually seeing consistently low uh, spot counts on the burner treated plots compared to the non heated control. Um, I do still have one more week of data to consider before I make any significant claims, but definitely something cool that we're seeing in the field. Thank you, Alex, for sharing your current progress on the inoculum reduction research. To continue, can you tell us a little bit about the second study that we are conducting at the field site this year? So for this trial, we are using sentinel beets. So these are um, very sensitive to Cercospora variety and also mechanical spore traps to detect early season Cercospora spores. And when did we begin seeing spores this season? So this season, um, I actually saw spores as soon as I started sampling, so around June. Also something to think about is we are sampling from a field where it was inoculated last year. So we did expect to see spores present very early in the season. Lastly, have you noticed any patterns in the spore observations so far this year? From what I have processed so far, we're seeing some peaks in spore counts. Um, these are occurring about 12 days apart. Um, this could indicate the time for repeating spore production and dispersal throughout the season. I'm still working on counting spores from the season, so there's more information to come to confirm these results.
did you detect spores before you first identified leaf spots in that field? So yes, we actually did see um, elevated spore counts prior to seeing the cercospor lesions on the plants. Thank you to our student Alex for sharing her research today. In summary, early season cercospora baticula levels were elevated prior to first spot detections. Spore monitoring efforts will further help us to develop and refine decision support tools for improved early season cercospora leaf spot management. And lastly, cercospora leaf spot inoculum levels appear to be reduced after heat treatment of the leaves prior to defoliation at harvest. This research is ongoing and we hope to have more information and results for you in the future. Thank you all for joining us. Below is some contact information if there are any questions about the research that we have shared today.